there are many features in Adobe Premiere Elements which automate or speed up or take a lot of the guesswork out of video editing movies. One such feature is the Smart Trim tool, which we're going to be looking at here in a second. So we've got a video segment on our timeline, one segment, one long video clip, and I've got it selected, as you can tell, by the blue bars around it. Now, if I go down to my Tools menu and scroll down a little bit, I'll see, among all the other things, Smart Trim. Smart Trim puts Premiere into a different mode. You see now all my tool menus are grayed out. My quick and expert buttons are up here. And I've got two controls for Smart Trim options and Done. Clicking Done will exit the Smart Trim mode and take you back into regular editing mode. So I'm going to go back into Smart Trim mode for a second. Also notice that it puts several areas of these little blue hash marks across our video segment. What Premiere does in Smart Trim Mode is it analyzes the movie and it looks at color balance and various levels and uh, camera motion or blurriness or it also does some facial recognition to see how many people are in the scene to see if um, a segment is interested or not or it's got a, several different criteria that it uses to judge whether or not a clip should remain in a video. And it gives you the option, you can go through here and I can select one of these and you can tell that it's selected because the bars turn white and the whole area gets surrounded by a blue background. And I've even got the capability of resizing these if I want to. I can grab the end of it and make that segment a little bit clip bigger. And if I right click on one of these, then I have the option to um, select all of the uh, segments that it's marked to trim this segment, keep this segment. If I keep this segment, then it no longer becomes one of the marked segments. If I highlight another segment and I right click on it and go to trim, then it cuts that segment out and it doesn't put a cut in my, in my one segment. It still retains one long segment. It's just cut out those frames that it had highlighted. It also replaces it with a smooth little transition. So you don't see a hard cut when you remove these. So this is a segment that it thinks should be removed. And if I trim it out, then it keeps the transition nice and smooth. Now, if I go up to my Smart Trim options, I see that I have two little sliders for quality level and interest level. Quality level looks at stuff like the color balance and the blurriness of the image. And interest level is looking for stuff like camera motion, um, people that are in the frame, that sort of thing. Now, normally it's in manual mode, which gives me the opportunity to go through here and select each one of these and decide whether or not I'm going to keep it or not. If I select automatic mode, then it's going to automatically remove all of these for me. If I change the quality level, say if I slide it all the way up to the top and click on save, then it's going to reanalyze the clip and you can tell that it's selected a lot more of my clip. If I go back into smart trim mode and set it back to the default settings and hit save, then the suggested trimmed areas go back down to what I normally had. Go back into Smart Trim Options, click on Automatic, and hit Save, and then it just automatically removes all my clips. Click on Done when you get ready to go back to regular editing mode, and now my transition menus, all my tool menus, my quick and expert mode, all that stuff goes back to normal. And I'm out of smart trim mode, and I know I have my smartly trimmed video clip. This is most useful if you have, um, say, you've got a long video segment from, I don't know, a family reunion, something, and you just recorded and recorded and recorded, and you didn't take the time to um, edit any of it out. You can put it in here and you can hit it with smart trim, and Premiere will give you um, 
a head start on tightening it up and cleaning it up and, and making it a, a little more uh, streamlined. Another tool that's available to us is the pan and zoom tool. And I see it here under my tool menu. And just like Smart Trim, it takes you into a different editing mode. It changes the interface and gives us a, um, a new look and feel, a very dedicated uh, interface for just, a, just this operation. And it is made to zoom into different parts of the, uh, of the video. So this new timeline that I have here is the entire segment that I had selected previously. And I've got a number of frames over my preview here. Frame one is highlighted in green. Frame two is this gray one here. And the clip as it plays along is gonna transition between frame one and frame two. So over the course of this three minute and 41 second segment, it's gonna slowly pan in and you can see the, uh, the highlighted box here is the area that would be visible as you're playing. It's going to zoom in from frame one to frame two. And you sort of have to imagine that this is the entire area of your viewing. So instead of seeing this square shrink in as you play the video, the video is going to get larger and larger. So at the end of the video, only the stuff that's in this center frame is what's going to be visible. Now I can highlight this frame. And I can move it around. And this line here shows me the track that the frame is going to take over the course of the video. And this little uh, marker here tells me the length of time that this line represents. These can be thought of as keyframes. A keyframe is an important concept in animation. It's a frame or it's a point in time where things are set. Anything that can be changed, if you set it a particular frame, then that's called a keyframe. If that changes over time, then another frame down the road, you specify a different setting for whatever it is, the size, the color, anything that can be changed. And that creates a new keyframe. So between these two keyframes, the computer figures out what has to happen in all the in-between frames to move from frame one at this point to frame two at this point. And we're gonna be talking a lot about keyframes over the next few videos. So now that I've moved my second frame from this spot, as I play my video back, it's gonna zoom in from this larger frame to the smaller frame, the new location, and you can see this dot traveling along the path, showing you the animation of my of my frames as it zooms in on different points. Now I can pick a spot in my timeline and create a new frame. And it just gives me an arbitrarily small frame in the middle. And it calls this one. Now, this is my new frame two. And what was originally frame two is now frame three. With frame two selected, if I move it around and resize it, now the animated path of my frames looks a little bit different. It goes from frame one here around the outside edge, then it's going to travel up here to this point, and it'll be this size at frame two, 33 seconds into the clip. And then the remainder of the clip is going to transverse across this line from this point to this point over here, and the frame's going to resize up to the size of frame three. And notice the path has changed on my uh, animation indicator. It tells me the new length of that line is three minutes and eight seconds long. And if I pick a different point, 
in the video, create a new frame. It renumbers all my frames. So frame two is still frame two, but there's a new frame three here in the middle. And it frame what was frame three is now frame four. And if I move frame three around, Now I can see the animation of my pan and zoom frame over the course of my video. And as the video plays, I see uh, my little indicator there showing me where in, along that line we currently are. And then if I hit done, I see the effects of my pan and zoom in my preview window up here. It's a tool with a very dedicated purpose, and it's sort of intended to be an easier interface uh, use primarily with quick mode if you want to zoom in on different parts of your video and zoom out very uh, very efficiently. One of the things that should be said about these tools, both the Smart Trim tool and the Pan and Zoom tool, is that those are things that you can do for yourself manually under Expert Mode. And we'll be looking at how to do that in Expert Mode when we get to Expert Mode. The next tool we're going to look at in this video is the uh, time remapping tool. The time remapping tool, just like the pan and zoom tool and the smart trim tool, takes us to a different mode. And we have a, a different interface here. We have a video clip that we've selected down here and we have a preview window. Over here on this side of the screen, Premiere will give you some helpful hints about this operation. So we have the same frame indicator going through our preview image. And this is just a little video I did in 3D Studios and a bunch of eyeballs bouncing down a chute. Isn't that cute? Now, in order to use the time remapping tool, the first thing we have to do is add a time zone, a, a sequence of the video where we want to change the flow of time. So we select a point in our video clip and we hit add time zone. And then that'll put a little yellow marker wherever our frame indicator was. Now this time zone, this is the area of the video that we're going to change the flow of time. We can make it faster or we can make it slower using this slider down here. We can also reverse it if we want to. Now, just like other, just like other clips, I can click on this and drag it around. Although you notice this is a little bit differently. In other other editing modes in Premiere, whenever we can rescale a, uh, a segment or an indicator, then it shows us that by turning the cursor into a little red bar. But now it turns it into a little hand that we can grab and slide the, uh, the segment up. This little indicator up here tells us the time factor, so it's still playing at one times normal speed, which is normal time. Now, if I come through here and I say I want to make this segment play slower, I can slow it down to half time. Our time indicator up there changes, and this down here tells us a new duration. So this segment that we've selected is 8.8 .8 seconds long. We also have options to ease into the time or ease out, and that'll give us a, a transition area at the beginning and at the or at the end of this clip where it gradually goes from normal time to half time and back. And if we select those, then you see the duration changes slightly. So I'll just go back to the beginning 
of the clip and play through it. And watch when the frame indicator hits here. Now my video is moving at half time. And at the end of the segment, it'll speed back up to normal time. I can put several of these time zones across my video segment. And this one I want to play faster. And now time is going to be moving at four times the normal speed. So this segment that I have indicated now has a duration of less than one second. And if I play through that, it speeds up significantly. Now the other thing I can do, I'll add another time zone. And if I hit this reverse button, now time is going to be reversed during the course of this segment here. And if I play through that, we'll see how that works. So it plays through it once, then it plays through it again backwards, then it plays it through again at normal speed. When we hit done, it goes back to the timeline and the changes that we've the changes that we've incorporated using the time remapping have been added to our video. So there it's playing slower. Now we're going back to normal time. Now time should speed up. And here in a second, we're going to see it reverse itself for a few seconds. So these three tools all have some things in common. The time remapping tool, the pan and zoom tool, and the smart trim tool all put Premiere into a different editing mode where some of the controls may be available, some of them may work different, some of them may look different, some of them may be gone. Also, everything that you can do with the smart trim, the time remapping tool, and the pan and zoom tool, you can do manually in expert mode. And it's debatable on which one is better. Uh, some of the stuff using these tools is automated for you. Like in the Smart Trim tool, it makes a lot of decisions for you. Um, however, in expert mode, when you're doing these kind of operations, it's nice to have absolute control over every little thing that you're doing. It's really intended for people that want to do something quickly and they don't want to think about it a whole lot. More on that when we move into expert mode, which will be the subject of our next video. Thank you for your attention.